Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiang. Korea's hit series Squid Game has taken the world by storm. An estimated 124 million Netflix subscribers have watched the Korean adventure since it premiered. It also swept China. But there is a catch. Netflix is not available in China. Technically, people in China shouldn't be able to access the series due to the nation's great firewall. But many are watching it anyway through VPN, illegal streaming, download websites, and hundreds of Squid Game themes video clips have been uploaded on TikTok. As per the South China Morning Post, the fact Netflix isn't even available in China has done nothing to dampen Squid Game's popularity among local audience. With South Korean ambassador Zhang Hua Sun hinting that he's aware that at least 60 different websites where the Chinese population can illegally watch it. Many Koreans are expressing disdain toward the rampant online piracy of Korean content in China, and the popularity of Squid Game has made the issue much more tangible. What about Netflix? What will Netflix do? Nothing. A Netflix official said, currently, Netflix is available in a total of 190 countries, which does not include China. There is currently no legal way to watch Squid Game in China, and we are aware that the viewers in China are not streaming Squid Games legally. But this is not unique to Squid Game. The official added that as of now, Netflix is not planning to take any particular legal action against the pirating of Squid Game or the selling of related merchandise. Instead, the platform recently announced a statement addressing this issue in general. Part of the statement reads, Netflix expresses regret that content produced by the hard work of creators is being illegally copied and downloaded. We are cooperating with various monitoring agencies around the world to eradicate illegal content. According to the Korea Copyright Protection Agency, China is the top country of illegally distributing Korean cultural content, including television shows, films, webtoons, and music. Over the past five years, from 2017 until September this year, out of 411,000 cases of copyright violations regarding Korean content, 85,000 happened in China, followed by Philippines and Vietnam. Shortly before Squid Game launched in September, the Chinese Communist regime announced a series of bolstered regulations on pop culture in general under its rectification movement aimed to tighten its control. But that apparently did not stop Squid Game from gaining viral popularity. Is the Chinese government unwilling to intervene, or is it actually unable to? Park Kun Sok is a history professor at Yongsei University who specializes in modern Chinese history. He said, the Chinese leadership is definitely conscious of the show's popularity and is also fully aware that people use VPNs to access illegal distribution websites. But what can it do? No matter how much control it has, it doesn't have the means or the manpower to stop every single illegal website. No government does. Even if they impose stricter crackdowns, there will always be another loophole, like in any society. Due to such logistic difficulties, Beijing is likely to continue turning a blind eye to most pirated content as long as it does not directly challenge the Communist Party or has themes of subversion. Now, here is a deep question. Why Korean TV dramas, movies, songs, games are so popular? The Korean pop culture is popular not only in Asia, but in the Western world as well. Korean movie Parasite won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 2020, the first ever foreign language film to win such a prestigious title. Hai Liu, or the Korean Wave, is enjoying unprecedented global success. 
Is that because South Korea is so lucky that a handful of inspired and talented artists created works that are so click with so many people in the world? No. This is the result of a long-term government effort to expand the specific creative industries. When President Kim Da-jung came to power in 1998, South Korea was still reeling from the Asian financial crisis. Mr. Kim had a vision to make media and popular culture as a major source of economic growth. His administration set a goal of increasing the value of South Korea's cultural industry to $290 billion in two years, larger than the country's semiconductor sector, which was then worth $280 billion. In the past, Seoul successfully grew its electronics, shipbuilding, automaking, and other export industries through the public-private partnership. The same strategy was deployed to boost the production of Korean popular culture. Ministry of Culture and Tourism developed detailed business plans to grow overseas market for Korean TV dramas, movies, popular songs, and offered the loans to entrepreneurs and training for aspiring artists. This initiative soon bore fruit. The 2002 television drama Winter Sonata was a hit. In Japan alone, the sales of Winter Sonata merchandise surpassed $3.5 million. When the show's lead actor visited Tokyo in 2004, thousands of middle-aged women came out to the airport to greet him. From 2003 to 2004, the number of foreign tourists traveling to South Korea grew by nearly 75% due to the allure of Korean popular culture. Ro Mu Young, who assumed the presidency in 2003, coined the phrase Creative Korea and increased the subsidies for cultural startups. President Lee Mong Bak prioritized the cultural exports as a means of enhancing South Korea's national image and fostering economic growth. Lee was particularly keen on promoting Korean food such as kimchi. The next president, Park Kim Hae, promised in her inaugural speech that cultural enrichment would be one of her administration's main objectives. In the meantime, pop singer Sai's Gangnam Style quickly exploded in popularity. The video has since been viewed more than 4 billion times on YouTube. Current President Moon Jae-in has continued to support cultural production with tax incentives and subsidies. His government appointed the singers of boy band BTS as a special presidential envoy to the United Nations. More than one million people around the world tuned in to watch the band's speech at the UN General Assembly. No doubt. The economic payoff of these policies has been huge. In 2019, South Korea exported $12.3 billion in pop culture, including computer games, musical tours, and cosmetics. By one estimate, the number of South Koreans employed in cultural fields grew to close to 645,000 in 2017, three percentage of the entire workforce. BTS alone is an economic powerhouse. The band generates an estimated $3.5 billion per year in economic activity. In 2017, around 800,000 tourists visited South Korea because of their interest in the group. That was about 7% of all arrivals in the country. Other economic benefits are subtler but no less important even though South Korea runs a trade surplus with the United States. But Korean exports and investment have sparked little backlash among Americans. Companies such as Samsung, LG, Kia, and Hyundai are not controversial in the U.S. This is a sharp contrast to Japanese companies such as Toyota, Sony, and Honda in the 1980s, and the Chinese firms such as Huawei today. 
A Gallup poll found that 77% of Americans have a positive view of South Korea, up from only 46% in 2003. That is far more positive than American views of traditional allies such as Australia, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom. Here is another deep question, a much deeper question. South Korea has done a superb job of growing its soft power in ways that other countries can only envy and dream, particularly China. Chinese officials and academics expressed the importance of China's culture in the 1990s and early 2000s. Former Chinese President Hu Jintao said, the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation will definitely be accompanied by the thriving of Chinese culture. It was part of the core principles from Chinese leadership, the so-called peaceful rise and a harmonious society. These ideas intended to counter narratives from the West that China's emergence was a threat to the existing international order. Xi Jinping also said in 2014, we should increase China's soft power, give a good Chinese narrative, and better communicate China's message to the world. Mr. Xi implemented a stronger national effort to link China's popularity and likability to its rights. Under Xi's leadership, China has pushed the notions of the Chinese dream and the China model without providing clear definitions. Beijing's soft power initiative began a few years later than South Korea, and China is believed to spend billions of dollars to boost its international image. But it has yet to see a marked return on its investment in soft power. Why can't China produce hit TV shows, dramas, songs in the world? There is K-pop. Where is C-pop? Does China lack of aspired and talented people? Certainly not. I have no doubt there are plenty of gifted Chinese artists, screenwriters, directors, cinematographers, actors, and actresses. But creativity relies on free thinking and free expression. It's the wings of artists. Unfortunately, Chinese communist regime suffocates the free air by its censorship, referred to as the examination and approval system. Freedom breeds creativity. Propaganda won't harness soft power no matter how much money you pour in. This is my take. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.